Well, this is a film that I was going to review at a certain point in my life. Saving Private Ryan. Um, I've got some opinions on it. Let's see. Um, here's the thing with here's the thing with Spielberg, and you gotta understand what I feel about Spielberg. Spielberg knows how to control the audience. He knows what to do to make the audience feel a certain emotion. You can see that through most of his movies, E.T., Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, most of the more the family-friendly films. And if you watch some of his more serious stuff, like Schindler, Schindler's List, you know, you can see how he can, man he can use that emotion and make some really powerful stuff, even if it's not for kids. He's able to not, not only, you know, use his filmmaking abilities to make emotional impact on children, but he can actually make emotional impact on adults extremely effectively. And he can either use the idea of nostalgia, rage, anger. Basically, he's a very good director. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, but he's a very emotional director. He's not really an objective director. He has a hard time, you know, bringing films in an objective light. It's very subjective. It's very emotional. It can be very sentimental most of the time. You can see that in John Williams' music. You can see it in the lighting. You can see it in the acting. You can see it in the casting. You can see how much he likes to make emotional films. And Saving Private Ryan is definitely one of those. Is it a bombastic epic? Yes. Is it messy in the cinematography? Yes. Is it a blockbuster-esque World War II film that's, that doesn't really feel somber enough like Schindler's List? Yes, obviously. But I'm not going to say that those are flaws. Because they're not. Be because Spielberg is the master... It's the master filmmaker of the phrase, show, don't tell. We have to remember that films, as great as the writing can be, as great as the dialogue can be, eventually, you gotta admit, they're a visual medium. And if anything, Spielberg is able to create amazing emotional impact just through visuals and acting. That's all he really needs. He can write the most convoluted, or contrived or pretentious monologue he has ever written, but the acting and the lighting and the filmmaking overall can transcend that pretentiousness into some grand emotion. There's a scene here with Tom Hanks kind of monologuing about his past life and how, you know, he's gone through so much shit that if he goes back home, he, he's, he wonders if his wife will even recognize him. You know, it's like, this kind of monologue will obviously not happen in real life. But because of the swelling music, because of the setting, because of the lighting, because of Tom, H because of Tom Hanks being a great actor, it's, it just feels real. Like, all this pretentiousness and convolutedness feels real in this stuff. And because of that, this film is really good. It's obviously a film. It doesn't feel real most of the time, but because Spielberg is such a good director, it feels real. It at least feels real. It doesn't look real, but it feels real. And when it when it does look real, it looks brutally real. Like the Omaha Beach scene in the beginning is some of the most intense, horrifying, gory, confusing, and just overall impactful war scenes I have ever seen in filmmaking. You know, there's this one guy in the middle of the god goddamn scene where, like, there's this doctor who, like, who patches up this one soldier on the ground. And he's like, okay, he's gonna be okay. And then the sh soldier gets shot in the head. And then the doctor just screams out, just give, give us a chance. Just give us some time. And, you like, small scenes like that shows just how terrible this war was. Like, World War II, what the fuck, you know? Um, and there's also just some, like the Omaha Beach scene, the way it's shot, it's very messy. The camera has a, like, it's getting foggy. There's water splashing on the camera. There's just blood everywhere. It's very shaky. 
but it doesn't feel desperate. It doesn't feel desperate in its style. It w is obviously trying to convey the absolute chaos of this scene, and it works. All you see is dead bodies, mud, blood, seawater, soldiers trying to survive, Tom Hanks being confused as fuck. It's effective. It's extremely effective. And most filmmakers w wouldn't be able to make this effective because the, all they're trying to f focus on are it, it would be the camera because controlling shaky cam is extremely hard. But Spielberg, while being able to control shaky cam, can also show small details like this one soldier who just lost his arm. And instead of finding his arm, he should try to hide and try to shoot the enemy. But what he's doing is that he's all in the open, he's all out in the open trying to find his arm, and he finally finds it. And you know, he's not going to be able to do anything with it, but he still finds it and he just walks off. You know, small details like that, the chaos is so well represented. And because, like I said, show don't tell, that's his way of filmmaking. Because of that, Actions speak louder than words in this film, and the actors bring so much to the characters. The dialogue, like I said, is very pretentious, it's very film-esque, you know, it's not real conversations, but the acting does so much for it. Tom Hanks as John H. Miller, great, absolutely fucking amazing. Um... The Upham character. A lot of people say that the Upham character is annoying. I say the Upham character is basically us. We would be that scared and shit, shit, you know, we would be, we would be shitless in that s situation too. And he represents the every man so perfectly. And every person in that film, in this film, like there's that one guy who shoots well, there's that one guy who, who looks like Ben Affleck, he's kind of an asshole, but he's still a good guy, you know? They all have characteristics, but not, it's not stereotypical characteristics. It's not hijinks char hijink characteristics. They're all normal people. They just have diff slightly different personalities. They, they're not trying to be these, you know, cu cu you know cardboard cutout characters. They're trying to be human, and he... Because Spielberg directs so well, these actors portray them so well as well. You know, it's just, fuck. The lines are not that good, but the acting brings out so much in the characters. Every single one. There's not a single bit of bad acting in this film. Um, and there's also just great character development as well. John H. Miller, well, he there, he's like a whole character arc to himself. Like, he just opens up more. He doesn't really care about what's going on. He just kind of wants to go home, but he's going to do his duty, like... There's not a lot of character development in him, but there's a lot of character within him. Uh, the Upham character is probably the one who has the most character development. At first, he's scared. Even at, till the end, he's scared. But when he sees the injustice happening, when he sees that the Nazi that he saved, he helped to save before, just killed John H. Miller, um, he kills the Nazi, even though the Nazi recognizes Upham. You know, when... And obviously, Nazi thought he was going to survive, but Upham just kills him right, there, right, right there, cold, cold-heartedly, because the war makes you do that. The war is not a place where you're, you're going to be sentimental. You're going to kill some people, and sometimes it just has, it just happens. It just that's the thing. This film, as sentimental as it is, at the end. It perfectly represents what war is. It is a cold-hearted bloodbath that you have to kind of shed your human side for. And although the film's sentimental, and if the film went overly sentimental, it would have portrayed all the characters to be overly human. They hate the war. Oh, what is this doing to humanity? But they all kind of accept the reality of this bloodbath of a chaos. And that's really the great thing about this film. It's sentimental enough for the audience to grasp its message, but the film in itself is extremely gritty, it's extremely authentic, it's just extremely terrifying and painful to watch because everything that's happening in front of you feels so real. The only flaw, the only flaw in this film that I, that I have is that it feels way too self-absorbed at times because let me give you an example. The film starts with the American flag. And it fucking ends with the American flag. You know, stuff like that. 
the film doesn't feel universal. It feels like it was catering to, I hate to say it, Americans. It feels like it's catering to Americans. And it just felt awkward to me, like, oh, you could have made this such a universal film. But you have to shove that, shove the fact that, yeah, we're fucking America, America, you know? You need to do that, and it just doesn't work well with me. I just can't get into it. It feels like it's such a self-absorbed film. But that's it. In fact, stylistically, it feels self-absorbed, but the film itself doesn't really feel that way. So, I can't call it a masterpiece, but it's definitely a 4 out of 4. It's just great filmmaking, and it is entertaining, and it is emotional, if not self-absorbed. That's all I'm going to say. Saving Private Ryan... Round four, bye.